<laughs> the Koch brothers are two of the biggest and most controversial names in American industry and politics. They're worth $43 billion each. Charles Koch and his brother David are tied as the sixth wealthiest people in the world. But as he told us in a rare TV interview, if his money has bought him influence, it has also bought him disdain. You've effectively made yourself a target. Yeah, I, got, I, I get, get a lot of death threats. And I'm now on Al-Qaeda's hit list, too. It's it pretty scary. That hasn't stopped you. No, I, I, I decided long ago I'd, I'd rather die for something than live for nothing. What's it like living with this guy? Interesting. <laughs> Today, Charles Koch lives in this Wichita home with his wife of 42 years, Liz. He's CEO of the second largest private company in the country. Coke Industries, which makes everything from Stainmaster carpets to fertilizer and refines up to 600,000 barrels of oil every day. What was the vision that you had for this company? The way to succeed long term is not to think, how do I maximize profits? But how do, how do, I, how, how do we maximize the value we create for others? That vision, which Koch lays out in his new book, Good Profit, drives him both professionally and politically. In the 70s, he co-founded the libertarian think tank, the Cato Institute, to promote his free market philosophy, which advocates a radically reduced government with limited regulation and no subsidies. Do you distrust government? No, the government is a social agency of coercion. Now that sounds horrible and bad, but we need coercion. Beyond that, government should only be doing those things where coercion works better than voluntary cooperation and competition. That's a tough judgment call. Well, that's it, but the burden of proof needs to be on the government. To advance their agenda, Charles and his brother David Koch have helped fund a complex network of conservative political action committees and advocacy groups that helped give birth to the Tea Party movement. The Kochs and their donor network will spend $300 million during this election cycle, mostly in support of Republican candidates. First of all, I want to build a wall. Koch says he dislikes the tone of the presidential debates and disagrees with many of the candidates on immigration. We need to reform our immigration policy, letting everyone in this country who's going to make the country better and let in no one who's going to make it worse. You've got the NAACP and the Koch brothers. And in a surprising alliance, the Kochs, who spent heavily to try to defeat President Obama, have now joined the White House in calling for criminal justice reform to reduce prison sentences for nonviolent offenders. Where some poor kid in the inner city smokes a joint, goes to prison, ruins his life, where we have a president who is more privileged, who smoked a joint, becomes president. We have a candidate who admits smoking a joint. He's running for president. Now, where's the justice in that? On the left, though, the Koch's political spending has made them a symbol of corporate villainy. If the Kochs and Cassidy win, Louisiana loses. But Charles Koch remains committed to his original intent. Well, my goal was to get more and more people to understand what makes their lives better, what's, what's a fair, what's a just society. Has that proved more difficult than you thought? <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> you know, it's hard to save the world when the world doesn't want to be saved. Mm -hmm. Koch told me he's not, for the moment, backing any specific presidential candidate, but the candidates are still going out of their way to attend seminars and conferences backed by the Koch brothers because they want those contributions. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of money indeed. He had a lot of different sides. I was surprised. I learned a lot in that piece. A lot in that piece. Anthony he's good, Mason. that Anthony Mason, yeah, he's isn't he? He's very good. Yeah. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Keep talking.